Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Today, we're going to do something a little different. I've had several requests by email to do a past life regression hypnosis. And I thought this would be a very interesting guided hypnosis to do in this format with this kind of music. It does not matter if you believe in having a past life or in reincarnation. I think the process of going through a past life regression, if you believe in reality transurfing, the idea of the alternative space, or as Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about the void, there's an information field that we may be able to access that has information about other people's lives. That this may be a possible explanation of it, but I personally believe that our energy moves on, that we are energy and energy doesn't die. And uh, there is tons of research on reincarnation that's super fascinating. If you ever get a chance, you should look up jimbtucker.com. And for the last 50 years, doctors at the University of Virginia Division of Perceptual Studies have investigated cases of young children who report memories of previous lives. It's it's a fantastic book. Dr. Ian Stevenson, the founder of this work, published numerous scholarly articles, and the book's about cases from all over the world. After working with Dr. Stevenson for several years, Dr. Jim Tucker took over the project when Dr. Stevenson retired. With Life Before Life, he presented an overview of the research. Recently, he has focused on American cases, and he tells some of his experiences with some remarkable children in this book I just read called Return to Life that was wonderful. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Pollock Twins. It's really one of the best proofs of reincarnation. There is a pair of twins that died and they when they had the same family had twins again and the the two they both had birthmarks where they were the, the previous kids had scars and both of the kids remembered the toys that they had had there's multiple things that that that's impossible coincidences uh, it's pretty interesting there's cases of people remembering being shot down in a plane and giving specific details that people wouldn't know about. So what I have found is when you go through a guided hypnosis to try to look at your past lives, you also pull up certain deep archetypes and genetic knowledge that may be locked deeply within your cells. It's, there's a real possibility that buried within the neurons and the Higgs boson particles that are floating around us all around is some memories of previous incarnations. And there may be incredible knowledge that can be gained from this. As Vadim Zeeland says in Tufti the Priestess, why don't we just claim the knowledge of all of our incarnations? Can you imagine if we could un- do the veil and be given the key knowledge if if reincarnation is true and you've lived a hundred lives wouldn't you want to have all of that knowledge the deep knowledge and you could really get a better idea of what struggles you're going through and why you keep on reincarnating there's a belief in some places that you that, that you can you can move beyond reincarnating and there's a whole process in that but this is a guided life, past life regression hypnosis. And when you undergo this process, it's going to bring up memories and feelings. And I recommend at the end of it that you write down in a journal as much additional information that comes to you. I'm essentially going to open a portal and this information might start seeping through and you're going to see cool things in the future. You're going to have unique special wisdoms about certain decisions that you make and knowledge about different things that you might not have knowledge about. It gives you even a greater level of just common sense. And so just give it a try. There's nothing to lose. And you can 
the, just to pay attention to the images that come to your mind when you do this. And if you do it repeatedly, you can really build out a story. And there's some fascinating material out there. And things like this have really unlocked powerful things in people's lives. They've been able to overcome traumas that they weren't even aware of that were deeply embedded in these memories. So what I want you to do is find a place to relax. Find a place that is comfortable for you where there's no possibilities of interruptions. If this is easier for you to do laying down, that's okay. Whatever you do to feel comfortable is the key. And what I'm going to do now that you're comfortable is I'm going to count down from 10 to 1. Allow yourself to relax fully and completely. Don't concern yourself with the process. Just trust that you will receive the benefits you desire. 10. Eight. Relaxing. Relaxing your body. Relaxing your legs and your arms. Seven. Six. Relaxing all the muscles in your face, in your tongue, your feet. Five. Four. Slowing down your breath. Feeling complete relaxation in every muscle and cell in your body. Three, two, and one. And now you can just close your eyes. You can keep them closed. It was just to relax your eyelids. Right now, in your eyelids, there's probably a feeling of relaxation. And you find this pleasant sensation. Count rapidly now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. You are now at your own natural level of relaxation. And from this level, you may move to any level with complete awareness, and you can function at will. You are completely in control at every level of mind and you can accept or reject anything that is given here to you today. You are in control. There is something you long to discover and so our journey begins. My voice is your guide. And as we progress, you discover that you can listen to my voice and also deal with other things at the same time. You are a person of many abilities. So my voice does not distract you as we continue along our journey. You can relax. You 
You don't need to try to do anything. Your subconscious is here and can hear every word that I'm saying. And as you take a deep breath, and hold it and exhale you feel yourself drifting you feel less and less need to listen closely to my voice in your own time today tomorrow next week your subconscious mind will reveal what it has uncovered to you in a dream or at a moment of consciousness but at the perfect moment in the perfect way you will be given memories of other times and places memories you thought were gone only to be discovered again. And with these newly found memories comes new insights, new growth, new understanding. And stored deep your subconscious mind are wonderful memories. Your subconscious mind can access and recall these memories and bring them back with you later. So, by looking deeply into your mind, you can see your soul's vision and hear the voices of experiences captured far in the past. Your subconscious mind can access these memories and bring them back to you later. Can you remember a time in your life when you felt really safe? And you may begin going back to around the time you were 18 years old, choosing a pleasant and happy memory of about the time you were 18 years old. You will find that it is very easy for you to do, choosing one specific memory or event and just simply focusing on it, looking at the people around you, and then looking at yourself. I will be quiet and give you plenty of time to simply enjoy this event. You may hear voices, or you may simply feel 
the presence of people. You may see as clearly as in a movie, or the images may be vague. You may see these things in your mind's eye. You may hear voices and sounds from this time whispered in your ear. You may only sense the memory. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter in what way you perceive your memories. You are about 18 years old now. What is happening? Now, you may continue going back to about the time you were five or six years old. Again, choosing a pleasant, happy memory, an impression, or a specific experience from about the time you were six years old. Focus on this experience. Look at this memory clearly. See what you were wearing. Sense or feel the people around you. Look and listen to the information. Allow yourself to watch these experiences as if you were sitting in the seats of a movie theater. You are not re-experiencing this. You are just observing the six-year-old you. You are six years old now.
Now, continue going back to about the time you were four, and then three, and then two, and now one. Keep going back to the time of your birth. Going even beyond that to the warm and safe place from which we all come. You are where nothing can harm you. You're perfectly safe, perfectly secure, perfectly protected, perfectly at peace. You feel loved and completely warm, protected. This is the time of your beginning, of growing, a time of movement, and a time of preparation. This is a very good time. You can travel beyond this time and place as well. You're now going into the rose mist. It feels so soft and safe, and the rose mist surrounds you and protects you. You're very safe and comfortable here. The rose mist is a time of inner peace, tranquility, quiet movement, gentle sounds, and gentle light. You like it here very much because you can experience real peace. And serenity, real joy here. You are so comfortable here, and yet a part of you longs for more movement, life, and this longing grows within you until you become stronger and stronger. And this desire allows you to look outward. And as you look outward, you see a light, as if you were looking down a long tunnel. The light is good. You feel drawn toward the light, and you feel yourself moving toward the light. You are traveling along the pathway of the soul. The light. Enters you through the top of your head and fills you with light. The light heals you. Protects you. Surrounds you. As you feel energy flowing through your being, you feel a quickening in you, which is life. You realize you now exist in a separation from the mist and other beings that you are. In incarnate form, this realization comes over you, and you want to understand it. 
you look at yourself, you allow yourself to look down towards your feet. And you notice what you are wearing on your feet. Plant your feet and your consciousness firmly on the ground and notice what you're wearing on your feet. Don't allow yourself to analyze the experience, but just glance down and mentally record what you're wearing on your feet and what you sense or feel about this moment. You may wish to say this aloud. What are you wearing on your feet? You can continue looking up your body at what you may have on the bottom half of your body. Feel the texture. Determine whether it is fabric or metal or animal skin. See the colors of your garment. Continue looking up the body now and look up what you have on the top half of your body. Now allow yourself to glimpse the entire body and I will be quiet for a moment. What are you wearing? What is covering all parts of your body? What sort of body do you have? Notice any jewelry you may be wearing and allow yourself to observe whether you're wearing anything on your head, and whether you have any jewelry on your hands. Focus on allowing yourself to take in as much information as possible. Allow yourself to see clearly as you peacefully and gently explore the scene around you. Process. This information, if possible, take a mental picture of it. Look at your entire body. I will be quiet for a moment. Are you wearing jewelry? Are you wearing adornments of any sort? Now with your mind's eye, look around slowly to see where you are situated and make a note of it. Are there trees, mountains, sand, the ocean, a lake, a stream or buildings? Look around and record what you see. And again, I'll be quiet while you make a full turn around yourself looking in all directions and making a note of the important things you see. Mentally record as much of this information as you can so that you can examine it later. What do you see? Is it a familiar scene 
or is it someplace entirely new to you? And now you may look for other people. Who is around you? And how are they dressed? Are you in a group of men? Or women? Or are you alone? If you're alone, you may look to another time when there are people around you. Make a note of these people and record the information mentally so you may access it at a later time. If there are people, do they look familiar? Is there someone special nearby? Someone with whom you have a special relationship or a special fondness? Look around you. Perhaps there's a child or an adult who is dear to you. Are you part of a community or are you one of only a few other people present? Mentally record these feelings and impressions. If you listen closely, you may even hear names being mentioned. Who is there with you? for a vehicle of transportation, something you may have ridden on or in. Are there carriages or wagons or beasts of burden? Is there someone there who is currently using a means of transportation? Make a note of the means of transportation. Do you see any forms of convenience? Is this a place of commerce, activity, and many forms of conveyance, or is it a quiet, less active place? Answer these questions either out loud or in your mind so that you can review this information later.
this time, you may feel hungry. Who is it that you eat where you eat when you are hungry? Can you smell the food cooking? Are you able to taste it? Are there smells of food or cooking? Is there a store or place to buy food items near you? If so, what does it look like? Record your impressions. What do you see and smell? Listen quietly. You may hear friends call out your name to you. What is it? What are you doing? What is your work or your job? Do you seem to have an occupation or something that occupies your time? If you don't work, are you a student? And if so, what are you learning? As you look around yourself for clues, do you get an impression of where you are? What land is this? What is this land called? What is the name of this place? Are you in a forest? A desert? mountain top or valley or are you in a city with public transportation lots of people and lots of activity perhaps you can sense what century or what year this is do you know what year this is Ask someone who's close to you, or look for a newspaper or printed calendar.
and now you may move to a major event in your life, a time that has important meaning for you, and focus on what is happening. This may be a big event or a small event. It doesn't matter as long as it has significance for you. Can you recollect or return to the moment of a major event in your life? What is happening next? What moments follow the event of importance to you? What is happening next? What is happening now? What are you doing now? And now, in a detached way, as a bystander, look at the time of your death in this our incarnation. Death is simply the next stage of life. What events have led up to your death? How did you die? Allow yourself to witness these events without feeling them in a painful way. As just an observer, what do you experience after your death? Look at the death experiences and ask to assimilate its messages. For all will be unveiled for you now in this moment. What is the reason or purpose for this life? What are the lessons for your soul? Was it a happy life? What made you the happiest in this life? Was anything left uncompleted in this life? If so, you may return to complete it. Take your time. I will wait for you.
that you have received all this information, bring it all together into a vivid symbol or series of symbols and wrap it up in something familiar to you so that you can bring all this information back with you. Encode this information in your mind in a way that will make it easy to access. Allow yourself to encapsulate this experience and trust that you will be able to access the information that is value for your present life and that you will release the information that has no value for your present life. Most important of all, mentally look into your own eyes, the eyes of those around you and those you have loved and that special person. Look into the eyes of everyone you saw and send love from your eyes to their eyes. And as you bless them, forgive them and send them your love for they are still with us somewhere, perhaps with you now in some way. Do you recognize any of these people in your life now? And as they begin to fade, let them go. Release them. Bless them. Forgive them. And let them go as they bless and forgive you. Let the veil drop slowly. Allow the curtain to slowly close and allow a full healing of this life and of this time. And as you slowly begin coming back, traveling through time and space, you can bring back with you all that was positive, interesting, and significant to you 
simply release and close the door on information or impressions that are not necessary for your soul's growth at this time. Bring back only that which has value for you. You will retain in your conscious mind only what is helpful and beneficial to you at this time, in this present moment. Now, you're coming back through the light, to the light, once again, traveling on the avenue of the soul, where all things are known to you through that warm and safe place where nothing can harm you, nothing can harm you returning through levels of the mind to the clear recall of your own mind and bringing back the information that you've recorded slowly now, coming back to the present life today plant your feet firmly in the present step fully and happily into your present life and in a little while when you're fully awake you'll feel just wonderful you will feel better than you've ever felt before. You'll be wide awake, clear-headed, and happy. You will feel relaxed, refreshed, happy to be alive, and happy to be you. Your subconscious mind always protects you and knows what is best for you. I will count from one to ten. At the count of ten, you can open your eyes and be wide awake, feeling great, feeling fine, happy to be alive, and happy to be awake. I will count now. One, coming back very slowly now. Two, coming back very slowly. Three, coming up now. Four, feel your energy returning to you. Five, feeling totally normal and perfectly fine. Six, feeling re-energized. Seven, coming up to your full potential. Eight, fully awake and fully aware of your surroundings. Nine, feeling completely revitalized and 10 wide awake open your eyes now wide awake that was wonderful what an incredible journey that you've been on once this episode is done you should write down as many impressions as you can remember it is very much like a dream do you not have to question whether or not these impressions were just imaginations of your mind or not? There may be knowledge or information from them in any case. And I would love for you to tell us exactly what you experienced in the comments. If you want to, I would love to get a full description of your previous incarnation. What did you see and where did you go? Share as much as possible. I would love to see that in the comments. Doing stuff like this is always fun and interesting, and, un and oftentimes it can unlock incredible parts of you. Welcome.
to the reality revolution. <laughs>